Guns have any place in our society or should they just be banned altogether? Our interview with an American pastor yesterday sparked a raging debate on the soapbox. You'll remember that he was holding a gun open day at church, even rattling a gun off. Well, in a moment, we're going to hear from both sides. But first, have a look at the part of the interview that polarised most people. All right, Pastor Ken, really appreciate your, uh, your point of view on that. I must admit... Thank you. 99% of Australians it's are absolutely poles apart. Sort of our answer would be to get rid of all the guns, so, you know, people uh, don't get You're never going to do it. It's, it's, it's not mm. going to happen. It's part of our culture. So since yep. it's here, let's learn to be responsible and safe with them. Well, among the hundreds of emails sent in was this one from Eileen in Queensland. She wrote, Koshi, not all Aussies have the same opinion as you on guns, so don't say that most Australians would be against this idea. Do a forum on the subject. And we thought, what a good idea. Eileen, we've heard you. We're joined now by independent MP and former weapons instructor Bob Catter and Samantha Lee from the National Coalition for Gun Control. Good morning to you both. Now, Bob, we'll kick off with you, and we'll get through a lot of comments from viewers and, and get your views on it. Richard from New South Wales sums up the opposing view. No matter how you look at it, guns are only have one purpose, to kill. Why shouldn't guns be banned altogether? I've got <coughs> written down the bottom of my page here, toads, rabbits and pigs. 95% of Australia is bushland, and it is being absolutely ravished by toads, rabbits and pigs, and the same sort of people that make that comment cry and weep about our flora and fauna that are being wiped out. Well, I can tell you that the dunnet in my homeland, a very appealing little animal, there is no hope of its survival with the pig regime at the prisma. We're not allowed to use poisons, and I think probably there's a good argument why we shouldn't be using poisons. There is no other answer to that than a rifle that you can fire again and again and again. There's okay. just no other answer to that. So, all right, if you want to, but, but it's not. Look, the debate is not about that, Koshi. Truly, it is not. It, it is an extraordinarily simple proposition. It's simply whether you believe the individual has the right to protect his home or whether you should be forbidden by the state to protect your family, your wife, your kids from the predators of the night. That's what it's all about. And okay. if you say, well, the police should do that, well, I hope that you've got 35 or 40 minutes up your sleeve because in every case, it's all over at Rover after 40 minutes. The police downtime average in Queensland was 35 minutes. You can spend all the money you like. We went into it when I was in the Queensland Cabinet. We, if we doubled, almost doubled the spending on police, we could get it down to 30 minutes. Okay. That's the average. Okay. Half of them will be well over that average. So just then, Samantha, if I can put to you, because I think maybe, I don't know whether we want to separate the debate or it's too hard with the farming and the supporting mm. sporting communities. Uh, Nanny wrote in from Victoria. She says, I have a farming background. Guns are a useful tool. So do you agree that guns have a place on farms and in sport? Look, okay, our laws recognise that there are legitimate reasons for owning a firearm. After the Port Arthur massacre, <coughs> excuse me, we tried to get a balance between the needs of or desires of shooters and the safety of the community. Our concern at the moment is the semi-automatic firearms. After the Port Arthur massacre, Australia banned semi-automatic long arms, but they did not ban semi-automatic handguns. So our concern at the moment is trying to get rid of the most high-powered military-style firearms. OK. Um, because Todd emailed from the ACT, uh, backing up uh, Bob here, saying we should be able to have firearms to protect our family and property. That's, well, a, that's the nub of Bob's point. What do you reckon about that? In Australia, our laws do not allow us to use firearms for self-protection or protection of property. And I think that's trying to find a balance between public safety and the needs of shooters. Uh, in Australia, having a firearm is a right and not a privilege. We have to prove why we want a firearm, and I think that's legitimate. After the Port Arthur massacre, after 35 people were shot dead and 19 injured, we have to now show reasons why we want a firearm, and I think that's for the safety of the community. Mm. Well, I mean, it's an extraordinary proposition, with all due respects, Koshi, that you say you can have a firearm to protect the Dunnet, but you can't have a firearm to protect your children. Now, I mean, any day of the week, you can pick up the newspaper. And, look, it's a matter of outcomes. 
And, and I mean, I sat up till three o'clock in the morning going over the statistics, make sure, because I haven't revised the figures in my mind. But, but the ultimate argument is Queensland. In the last year of Bajocki Peterson, there were eight deaths with guns. Eight. Well, New South Wales was twice our size. They should have had 16. They didn't. They had 32 deaths with guns. Victoria, with 50% bigger population and draconian laws, draconian laws, they should have had 12 deaths with guns. They didn't have 12, they didn't have 24, they didn't have 36, they didn't have 40. Okay. They had 54 deaths with guns. So if you say right, by but banning but guns, America, you're going to stop the deaths with guns. I am sorry, it's, it's really America interesting. Has, the statistics has 10 times our population and 30,000 deaths a year. Gosh, yeah, I was waiting for that one, I'm sorry to tell you. <laughs> but you worked into the dingo trap. A superficial... <laughs> I'm sorry. It's sounding like Kevin Rudd now. Yeah. <laughs> a superficial look at the figures would indicate that America has a very high death rate. But if you break down the figures and have a look where the death rates are coming from, yeah. they're coming from Illinois, Chicago. They're coming from Washington, D.C. They're coming from New York. Now, what are the states with the most draconian gun laws? Washington, D.C., New York... Illinois. What are the states with the least no gun laws at all? Arizona, Nevada, Tennessee, Texas. Those states have the lowest, and it's the same phenomenon in Europe. East Germany had banned guns in the last year before they were under communist or communist totalitarian regimes banned guns. They banned guns. Their neighbours, Switzerland, every single home has a semi automatic rifle in it. That was why Hitler left them alone, I might add, in the last war. No one wants to pick a fight with those sort of people. But but guess what state had the highest death rate in Europe with guns? East Germany, <laughs> need I tell you. What state had the lowest death rate with guns in Europe was Switzerland. Now, That's I mean, it. when you look at a breakdown of the statistics, it's just the opposite. And I, all I can say, I don't understand now, why. Let, let's, uh, let's have a, have a go here. <laughs> No doubt there is an issue between culture and laws. Um, certain cultures obviously embrace firearms more than what Australia does. But I think after the Port Arthur massacre, uh, the Australian people decided that they don't want a gun culture. And so after that, they supported very strong firearms laws. Again, our concern at the moment is trying to maintain those strong fire firearms laws and to ensure that semi-automatic handguns are not avail available to civilians. And I think that's uh, trying to find the balance between the needs of shooters and the safety of the community. Sh shooters will argue that they need semi-automatic handguns for sport. Our answer to that is that they don't need semi-automatic handguns. They only need single-shot firearms and uh, they can use those in Olympic sporting shooting. Koshi, what Samantha is saying may be considered quite reasonable. And I'm not saying that it's not, right? But we just know that the anti-gun lobby will never rest. They'll take them away, then they'll come back and they'll take those away. I mean, to kill a toad, a toad is absolutely... I haven't seen a goanna in 15 or 20 years. But you don't need a to do that. You need an air rifle. That, that, I mean, if you want to bash them with a shovel, which is pretty, pretty bloodthirsty mm. way of doing it, um, if you want something surgical and quick, but, but you know, the toads are super very, and rabbits are a okay. huge problem. Yep. I mean, you need some, but, but that's not the reason. Okay. The reason is, and, and the statistics prove, and I don't know why, I'm not going to sit here and explain to you why that phenomenon occurs, where you ban it. All I know is in, Vic, in the Victorian era, they sort of repressed sure. sex, but there was a hell of a lot of kids before during that period. Prohibition. <laughs> Prohibition. Well, on that point, we might Prohibition. leave it, I think. Prohibition is another uh, example. <laughs> Thanks, Samantha, very thank much you. for your time. Bob Catter, thank you for joining us. Let thank us you, know Samantha. What you think, we've heard from both sides of the debate, so where do you stand on the issue? In our phone poll, we're asking whether you think an American-style gun culture is acceptable in Australia. 66% of people say no. 34% of people say yes, though. From almost 1,500 votes to vote yes, ring 1902 to vote no. Dial 1902